Hello YouTube. This is gonna be a quick video about um, how do you repair a scratch in your cast paint. So thanks to a genius person, I'm having this uh, little scratch, and so it goes all the way along to the tire in the rear bumper. So this is what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna fix this up and repaint and fill it up and repaint this bumper to match up with the rest of the panel color so apparently the bumper has been repainted and booked up before I can see all the flakes coming up and just as well flaking up so some of them is deep scratches they deep scratches you had to fill them up with bog and this is just white that means this is some white residue so this is probably can be fixed um, by buffing because uh, this is just and main I look for it around the house but I can point any used newspaper to just to mask the areas off so what I'm going to be using instead is garbage bags so they also work pretty well for repairing cars as well they as well as uh, dumping rubbish into them so I'm going to go ahead mask up the car Okay, I have finished uh, masking off the car, so this is what it's looked like. So I stand, so now I can get to the sanding part. Then you need to grab a bucket of water and give it a good clean. So it's a good thing to practice uh, every time you wash your car, always try straight motion lines like this. Don't go like uh, swirling around here and there like a madman. You can use a uh, sandpaper, which, uh, I'm going to be using 240 grit, so the lower the number is higher the grit size, that means you're causing more and more uh, scratches into the bumper, so that means you have to fill it more when it comes to repainting time, so 240 just sits between the ideal range, so I'm going to go ahead with 240. I'm going to fold it over. Get a good workable size piece. Yeah, that's, that's that's good enough for me. And I'm gonna dump it in the water and make it damp. And start. For that bit, that little bit that has the uh, paint transferring in it, I'm going to be using a different sandpaper. So this is going to be 1500 grit, which is like much, much finer. So it wouldn't do much damage to the rest of the panel where there's no damage, then it doesn't need to be painted at all. The next step is to um, prep the um, car filler. So I'm going to be using this one, Septone car filler. It's very cheap. It's the cheapest one I could get with my hands on. It comes with a tube. So this is, I think, your resin and the rest. Oh yes. Uh, 
that's what the filler looked like if you hadn't seen it before so you need to have a little applicator pad for this it's like a uh, flat piece of plastic uh, little panel unfortunately I was uh, having a look around the house and the garage I couldn't find mine so I'm gonna be using a used old uh, bank card you can use a credit card or uh, some other kind of card that has a little bit of flex into it but doesn't really uh, bendy so I'm gonna use this uh, old card I'm gonna get some into this put it into a clean piece of cardboard maybe asbestos you can use whatever the one you want to use and then you squeeze some of these uh, resin into the yeah. so don't use too much because it will harden up so quickly and also start cracking once it's becoming dry so the next step is to get a good mix around you really want to incorporate all these red paste into the white paste to make it look like pinkish otherwise it wouldn't dry up properly and create air bubbles alrighty that's your bog is done yeah we call them bog but the proper name is car filler you use the proper name Right, let's go to the car. So when you're filling with bog, you gotta be very gentle. Don't try to don't try to just fill everything and create lumps. And do it gentle so you won't create much air bubbles. The idea behind is to fill any gaps. So just do a decent coverage. And make sure you do it fast because otherwise the book will go dry in about a few minutes. So I can already start feeling the book is going dry and thick and hard. It's hard and becoming hard and hard to apply. Alrighty, we're getting good. Try to make it as flat as possible. Okay, now this is time you need to stop um, filling the bulk because it's getting harder and harder. And by putting more pressure, you start creating more air bubbles than it already has. So. Yeah, that's it. So, just let it dry for, let's say, um, 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. We'll come back once it's dry. If your bumper has cracks like this, you can sand, sand them down with 240 or 320 grit sandpaper. So they will even out the surface because we are going to be spraying primer and before we spray the paint so they will even out and disappear these, uh, all these cracks. Ok, now the body filler is completely dry and ready to be sanded so for this one there's two processes you can go through. The first one will be if, you're, if your damage will be deeper, if you had to have a lot of body filler fill into the cavity. Uh, you're better off uh, with dry sanding that means get your sandpaper and just um, start sanding to a flat surface because mine isn't that deep and I want to make this done as soon as possible I'm going to go with uh, wet sanding straight away so for this process either way if you go dry sanding or wet sanding you can use 800 grit so I'm going to go ahead finish up um, sanding It's a good idea to get a damp cloth like this and keep it up about. So as you as you're sanding, it will give you enough moisture and 
keep squeezing, keep squeezing the uh, water into the So when you're following the curvatures, so if you want to do flat sanding, you can use one of these backing pads. This is two or three dollars. Put it up, wrap the sand film around it, get your plates, pull it out. Okay, now we have finished sanding and almost ready to spray the primer. But before that, it's a good idea to go uh, with some wax and grease remover because um, even though you finish sanding all the panels, where now it's ready to be painted, but still there are places like um, the bumper that you didn't really sand it down, so those places might still have some residue of waxes or any paint coatings that you might have put earlier. So it's a good idea to go ahead with wax and grease remover and get them all cleaned up. Okay, now the car is ready for the first coat of primer. I have a master for all the car, so the tires, so it's garbage bags, the bumper lines, for the exhaust I use um, some sure plastic bags, I've covered up these with small pieces of tape so as this one the left side sized and also this side of tire uh, yeah, I'm get a little bit of yeah, that's done, so kind of ready, the bump is 77 now, so let's go ahead apply the first coat of primer before you apply the primer it's a good idea to give it a good shake the can so you get everything mixed up and make them prep for the working order. I have sprayed the entire bumper where there's all the marks before. So if you happen to get a little paint run like this, don't be, don't worry because we're gonna sand this down with a fine sandpaper. So it's about five minutes since I'm sprayed the first coat on so it's time to go ahead and put the second second coat so so this is what the bumper looks like after three coats of the primer so the bumper is not ready to be sanded I'm gonna go ahead with 800 grit sandpaper so I'm gonna wet sand it straight away and then apply the paint and the clear coat and we're done Okay, this is what the bumper looks like after it's been sanded and now it's ready to paint. So in the final sanding you have to feel the contours of the bumper. It has to be very smooth so I can I can feel no bumps or any indents or dents, nothing is everything is smooth as it's all sanded down so now we're ready for the final uh no sorry, not the final first base coat. So one thing you had to realize is before you apply the base coat, you can't have any water droplets like this, so it has to be completely dry, otherwise you will ruin your so paint. So I got my paint coat and I got my paint mixed up in the shops and got it in a can, so I probably will be use one whole can to get the bumper down. So first thing is to give it a good shake and go ahead and spray the bumper. If you have a hard time finding where your paint coat is, just go to your left side door or right side and select this paint coat number. 
the issue release on this uh, little flight so it's called paint 3 and 3 or 3 so then you go to your paint store and ask the salesman to have this paint mixed up for you Okay, now three coats of paint is applied and bump is looking awesome. Now you gotta push this back into the cap. There you go. It's looking very good. So now it's the final coat, which is clear coat. So first things first, get a good shake and apply two coats. Uh, if I got enough paint left in the can, I'm gonna go with three coats, uh, more coats, more shinier. And just make sure you spraying very, very light coats of these. Don't go like very thick. You'll have paint runs. That. So this is what the bump looks like after three coats. Started becoming Even shiny. though the bump is start looking shiny again, it's not going to be as shiny as the rest of the car. That is because the clear coat out of the paint can is not going to be shiny. You had to buff it off because um, when you spray painting, you can see this little lumps they call it orange peel so this orange peel is not allowing the light to be reflected perfectly so you're gonna pop this out and just try to make the surface as flat as possible so then all the panels you just painted will look like this like glass And as always, if you like this video, press that like button. And if you like more DIY videos like this, press that subscribe button. See you in the next video.